Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to go ahead and not reuse this bit. Hello, I'm that James guy, and today we're gonna see what went wrong with my Ford EcoBoost one liter three cylinder turbocharged engine using my new Princess Auto thousand pound engine stand. Now, what is Princess Auto? For my American friends, it is the Canadian version of Harbor Freight, only slightly cheaper, somehow, and slightly less quality, somehow. But uh, this was on sale for $80 for a thousand pound engine stand. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all back together and then get this engine on there, somehow, and then we'll see what went wrong with that thing, maybe. This should be it for the transmission. Maybe. Oh yeah. Pulled the half shaft out accidentally. But uh, I'll try to keep it in. Just to avoid leaks. That's why I kept them in the first place. I didn't want big oil leaks flying everywhere. Quite a bit of meat left on this bad boy. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Getting close to the rivets. Okay, before I can put this thing on the engine stand, I have to remove the flywheel. But at some point, I'm going to have to remove the harmonic balancer off the front. Now this bolt on the front is notoriously tight. Like hundreds of foot pounds that it's impossible. So what I've done is I have inserted those two bolts into the flywheel housing or into the engine block there and I jammed a screwdriver into the teeth. I know there's an official tool for this but uh, this seems to have done the trick. I actually did get it loose, you know, I used a, uh, a snipe to extend it. I literally put all my weight into it. I got this nut loose, so I can go ahead and get the flywheel off and continue on, get this thing mounted on the engine stand. Oh yeah, you know, this is like not so bad. the pans off and uh, this windage tray here that kind of keeps the oil away from the crankshaft you can see how mangled it is it is absolutely mangled I suspect that's what's happened here is we've had a loss of lubrication either from the turbo blowing or these things do have a nasty habit of this pickup screen getting clogged in the oil pump um, if you don't do your oil changes often enough stuff I've been reading. You can see how mangled this is. I already see the journal down there. The, uh, one of the rod bearing journals is absolutely scorched on this thing. Let's just pull this all apart and I'm sure we'll figure this out pretty quick here. I don't know if this is acceptable. Look at this. Belt driven oil pump. Can you believe that? Oh man, anyway.
Okay, you can see how bad this journal is here. Uh, this bearing, number two bearing, for sure spun. Look how black it is. That means it got red hot. And eventually got so hot that the rod probably started rattling like crazy and got so hot that it decided to explode and fly, fly out that hole right there. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Isn't that artistic? It's a very artistic shot right there. Um, yeah, but it also decided to go down into that hole down there. There's another hole. So, holes everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and take number one and number two caps off, uh, rod caps, just to see how close behind they were to uh, completing, completely letting go. Hey, look at this, folks. Fracture split. Let's, uh, it's actually kind of impressive that they would do that. You can see that the uh, mating surface to the connecting rod is very rough. It's not machine flat. Same with down here. These are actually machined together, and what they do is they break it off so that it's kind of a jagged finish, and it has a ton of surface area because this perfectly mates with that, and that perfectly mates with that because it's a fracture split connecting rod. Very impressive, Ford, that you would go that far. And that bearing is like brand new. But it is the lower. We should check the upper, the one that actually handles all the stress. It is basically brand new. So why did number two fail and not number one? Well, let's check out number three. Yeah, like new. And again, the upper is like new. Like pretty much not even a scratch on it. Kind of weird. So one of the things these engines are known for, and I do believe that's what the problem is here. Here's the oil pump. It sticks way down into the oil. It's, it's upside down here compared to the oil pan. But this sticks down in the oil. And this screen gets all clogged up with debris and whatnot. So if you zoom in, you can see here that there is literally no screen left. This is just clogged with kind of like goobers. And so what happened, I believe, is this thing lost oil pressure from this being clogged up. Sometimes you can get a check engine light on and low oil pressure codes or a low oil pressure, low oil pressure warning. If you act quick enough and get a new oil pump put on, then it's fine. Not this one. One kind of interesting design feature here is these piston cooling jets. You can see down here there's a little jet that squirts oil up into the piston. That's actually kind of impressive. Even though this engine's a real piece of crap, there are some real interesting design bits here. This is a very deep skirted design as well. You can see how far down the oil pan rail is, like way below center when it comes to the crankshaft. So it's very deep skirt, makes it stronger, but also weaker because it exploded anyway. Isn't that cute? These engines have no exhaust manifold, which seems to be kind of a normal thing nowadays. It just goes right into the cylinder head. Huh. So I've removed the engine harness, and now I'm going to remove the valve cover. Well, I'll try anyway. We'll see what happens here. Oh, oh, oh. These are the ignition coils. Kind of funky looking. This is the high pressure fuel line that feeds the uh, direct injection injectors. I don't know how many PSI these things go to. Generally they're like three or four thousand uh, when they're running. Uh, yeah, a little bit of gasoline. Three bolts and this injector rail should just kind of pop out. Hmm, what am I missing? I was not missing anything, I just had to pry harder. Okay.
It's always the fun part. Seeing inside an engine for the first time. This will never get old. Ever. Here's our wet timing belt, folks. I'm going to pull this whole side of the engine off. We're going to pull the cylinder head off. We're going to try anyway. I just want to see how mangled it is inside. Maybe keep that piston as a souvenir. Super important. You gotta get them all, guys. We're doing pretty good here. I think we could have this head off pretty quick. Ew, wet timing belt, guys. Why is that even allowed? Maybe it isn't, I don't know. Oh no. This lifetime timing belt is starting to show its age here. Here, look at the cracking. Oh yeah, that's a good shot. Yeah, this, this belt was ready to, ready to fly apart. Gross. Why? Why, Ford? So we've done pretty good here. We're basically on the last step before we get the cylinder head off. However, unfortunately, Ford, why, why Ford, they use a Torx Plus. So I'll, I'll try and I'll try and show you that. The head bolt is a Torx Plus. So, and you need an extension, like a long one, a deep one. So you can see here, here's what a Torx Plus looks like. Torx Plus, you can see it's it's got a wider pointy bit than a normal Torx. And I have them, and I think I even have the right size. Torx Plus 50, I have up to 55. But, but it's too far down. I can't, it won't reach. It's like, it won't reach. It's, although, that's not bad. I, I, maybe I can try. It seems a little... Seems a little sketchy. Maybe I, maybe I can try. What I was able to do is take my socket and actually punch the kind of the bitty part out a little bit. You can see the little space there, it's just so that it could get a little more length in here. Let's see if this works. Oh, that's a good sign. Oh, yeah. This will work, folks. Oh, this is so good. This is so sketchy. Because I have this going from half inch down to three eighths down to quarter. I guess this is a testament to uh, Canadian tire freaking quarter inch drive stuff. Seems to be taking it. Sketchy, but it's working. Oh my word. Ooh, 
I see damage. Here we are, folks. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to go ahead and not reuse this bit. Huh, fun. Only thing is the cylinder wall doesn't feel bad. Not that it matters. The block is toast. The head doesn't even look too bad, you know. Um, I wonder about that injector. It's been... It's been whacked. A little bit. It's a little shiny on the tip. You know, you compare the one beside it. Let me see, the spark plug got a good hit. Not that that matters. But you know, like... Like, yeah, it, it for sure got hit. But I wonder if this head is... I should pour some water in there. Well, the exhaust valves are really easy to check on this one because they're all connected to one port. So... Oh, what the heck happened there? That valve's bent. Or something. But it's funny. Yeah, that one's leaking. Those are leaking real bad. Right there. That one. Watch. Ooh, that's like a geyser coming out of that one. Ooh, that ain't good, eh? Whew. Matter of fact, I can actually see the see the crack on that one. I can see the space. And when I look at it here, it is visibly, visibly lower than the other one. Okay, well, cylinder head no good. All right, intake side. The age old water trick. Showed you guys that in the PT Cruiser videos. Hey, they're good. Doesn't really matter. Exhausts are no good. So it needs a head, needs a crank, needs a block, needs a piston. Does have a couple good rod bearings though, if anyone wants to buy a rod bearing. So there you have it folks. Literally not much salvageable here. Almost nothing. Not worth my time. I probably shouldn't have taken it apart, but I guess it was fun, right? It was super fun. This kind of thing is always super fun. Um, yeah, I still don't know what I'm gonna do. So leave some comments. What should I do? Uh, and uh, if this was somewhat useful to you and even just a little bit entertaining, uh, like the video, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time.